Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Atom RPG. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today here in Paragon as we... Well, I'm looking forward now to getting to Bunker 317, but uh, before we do that, we need to uh, solve things, many things to solve here in Paragon. So let's have a chat with, um, with this fellow over here. The man with weathered skin rubs his hands on his cloth pants and stretches it to you as you come closer. He ro rubs his hand, not his hands. He stretches the hand. Uh, he has a flat cap over there. He's got some really expensive stuff. He's got a log, which is good. Which is good to have. It's actually a pretty cheap log. I think his prices are decent. Last episode we did some... Uh, yeah, his prices are pretty good. Uh, we did some um, some trading, so that was pretty decent. Uh, and uh, let's see what this guy says. Hey! He says. I'm going to silently shake his hand. Let's go with that. The man shakes your hand for a whole minute before releasing it and saying, I am Carrion, the Caravaneer's handyman. Never seen you in Paragon before. We can chat around, or we can exchange some experience if you want. Experience? How do we do that? Oh, it's easy. You see, I almost never drink, and I don't really spend time with the ladies. So when a caravan stops somewhere, I don't run to the nearest pub. Instead, a, a caravan that he's on, I suppose. That's just important. Um, instead, I try to learn something new from the locals. You'd think the pub would be a good way of doing that, but yeah. Well, for example, I met a good man in your lands. He showed me how you skin your mutants around. There, I assume? You should t totally visit him as well. He lives near Otradnoi. Uh, by the way, I can show you something new myself. For example, I can teach you how they mask the tents in the steppe, or how they clean guns in Kaliningrad, or how the Polacks fight with their Polish knives, or how the Novgorodians haggle. Actually, it's the Poles, not the Polacks. I'm sure that is closer to the Russian version. It's the, In English, it's the Poles. It's the Polish people, the Poles. Uh, it's like the Finns are the Finnish, or the Swedes are the Swedish, or the... How would the English, the Englishmen, is that is that how it goes? Yeah, English don't, English people don't don't have one of those words, or the Russian for that matter. It's nobody says, that, well, I don't know. Anyway, the Poles have a name and it's the Poles. Um, tell me about gun care. Great pick, buddy. I, I figured. Ooh, that's nice, actually. That's a great pick. Um, yeah, because it's specifically for pistols and SMG. And he teaches me five points in that, which is... Uh, yeah, what, what a story. Thanks for sharing. Wait a minute. He describes uh, how they prepare the new police guards in the new Kaliningrad Republic. Yeah, it's a story. Uh, he shrugs. His name is Carrion. He, he shrugs. Uh, his shoulders, important detail, with a sly grin plastered on his face. Glad to help. Uh... Yeah, I can't ask the other ones, but I'm glad that I went with that. Uh, why do you have such a weird name? Carrion? Ah, well, it's because a caravan found me almost dead on the Trudograd Road. There they were... Though, there they were, minding their own business when a dead body pops up on the road. Wearing fine clothes. I imagine it's the other way around. The body was there minding its own business and they, they just... Pass along. They came closer to loot me, I suppose, but then I started gasping for air, screaming, waving my hands while asking for water. I don't even remember how I got there, or anything about my former life, not even my name. So I got this nickname instead. Hmm. Uh, how far have you gone with the caravans? I've been to lots of places. Mazovia, the Novgorod free towns, and... How many city-states I've been to? Solnstnegrad, Murmansk. Oh, that's a, that's one that I recognize. Trudograd, Kirov, fortified like a huge castles. Those cities. Mm-hmm. It didn't really tell me about them, but names. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Paragon and this part of the wastes in general is plain like bread and butter. Nothing too scary, nothing too amazing. People are average too, although in most places the common folk are much poorer. Mm, than in here? You guys live in tents. I mean, well, they can have a lot of money. It's not... They still live in tents. <laughs> 
Well, uh, so eat the. Uh, care to share some rumors? Rumors. I like legends more. Local folk, local folk tales, you know, like the legend of the brain worm or the stone spiral ritual or the underground network of slaveholders that works from some local cafe or the potion that lets you talk to animals. Too bad I, I didn't need any potion, by the way. I just I talked to the animals. Too bad I don't know much about any of those legends. A pity, indeed. And more, he just he threw some names at me, much like the cities. Tell me about the cities you've been to. And he tells me the names of the cities. Tell me about rumors. And he tells me the subject of the rumors, but not anything in particular. Interesting man. Having noticed you, this ruthless-looking man immediately places his hands on the grips of the Nagant revolvers attached to his belt. However, after carefully looking you up and down, he takes his hands off the guns. That's with two Fs. Crosses his palms on his chest and uh, invites you to come closer with a nod. I will come closer with a nod. What do you want? He asks. Uh, you seem somewhat too cautious. Are you expecting a disaster to happen? The man frowns as his left hand finds its way back to the carved handle of his revolver. Well, let me put it this way. Usually men try to escape their fate. I am running after it. You're running after your fate? You're leaving something out of this conversation, brother. Care to share? I'm just gonna ask. Are you running after your fate? And uh, the man rearranges the revolvers in their holsters, puts one in the other, and vice versa. I'm following an unprincipled criminal who was nicknamed the Laughing Man in my native lands. I like the distinction here. He's a criminal, but he's an unprincipled one, which makes it worse. Unfortunately, he's long gone from here. That bastard took away the lives and property from many of my fellow citizens. We managed to completely crush his gang in the battle of the old windmill. However, he managed to escape. I volunteered to follow him, to make sure that he would never hurt anyone ever again. We've met not far from here a while ago. Oh, what a battle that was. He managed to run away again. He found a driver that drove him to the east, far away from here. As soon as my wounds have healed and my hands regained their firmness, I will continue to pursue him. The laughing men won't escape me this time. My trusted revolvers guarantee that. I'm gonna show my thumb without saying a word. Just, you know, like, I'm, I'm gonna bring my hands together, look down at them, and open my palms one on top of the other. And then I'll put my thumb on my right hand forward and look at it as if, like, there's a boo-boo there. And I'm gonna be, like, pointing it at him and being, you know, looking at him, just showing him the thumb and be like, look at this. Look at that. There's a thumb. And that's what I'm gonna do. Well, whatever happens, one of us will bite the dust, fall dead. Maybe even both of us. And I've made my peace with that possibility. Is that anything else? Uh, yeah. Well, so where are you? Where'd you come from? I came here from the faraway lands that belong to my family. However, right now even the most experienced stalkers wouldn't find anything there except the remnants of the former glory. Oh, the remnants of the former glory. That, that, that's that. Oh, what are you doing here? At first I needed to nurse the wounds I've suffered on the way. Now I'm just resting, waiting for my intuition to let me know that it's time to resume my travels again. Well, what can you tell me about the city? Even after spending many months here, I can't truly call this place my own. And is there truly a place anywhere I could call my own? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there is. You said, uh, actually you didn't. Good point. I thought thought that line over there was specifically my lens. But no, it's the lens of his family. Uh, so... Yeah, care to share some rumors? Uh, when I got to Paragon, my whole body was wounded. It was just a whole wound. Just a ball, whole body. Lucky for me, a wandering doctor helped me got back on my feet. It's likely to, likely that the local authorities would have just left me there to die. A wandering doctor, also known as a dentist. Because that's what wandering doctors do most of the time. Just fix people's teeth. And by fix, I mean take them away. At least in the post-apocalypse or medieval times. It's, uh, teeth are something very, very important. And if you want, if you want to gain money, you go to a place and ask, whose teeth hurts? And then you take their teeth away and get their money. But because they give it to you, not, not because you killed them or anything. Although that would also maybe work. Although you'd then be on the wrong side of some 
families and it'd, it'd be bad. Don't pass by, kind people. I shall not pass by. What? You want people to pass by, otherwise you can't sell anything. A kindly merchant lady in a Panama hat. Panama, Panama, I believe. Tends to her wares. When she spots you, she smiles and says, Glad to see you here. Did you want to buy something? I have meat. It's really fresh, too. But I can do a promise only. Oh, a promise. Oh, I'll do a discount next time. Uh, she has some money, not too much. Her prices are rubbish, so I'll not even look. Uh, can I ask you something? Sure, ask away. Well, tell me about yourself. Me, my family, all of us are from Olduchini. We started living around here not that long ago, after our home was hit by a year-long dry spell. Living here, well, it's it's manageable. Uh, how's, how goes the trade? Traders that drive or walk through here always want to rest for a while, to cook some food. There, That's where I come in with my wares. I, I always have fresh, fresh produce, she says. Where do you, I would like to ask where she gets her produce. What what do the merchants talk about, about around here? Oh, there's this rumor that the people from Krasnos Nameni pay bandits to attack local caravans. Isn't that against the law or something? The law. Not not against the car the, the bandit's law, so no, it isn't. Um, any interesting buyers? Interesting? Well, once I met this pre-war looking soldier guy, he said he was looking for some bunker with his pals, who sent him here to buy some food for the trip. Who was he with, I wonder? Mm-hmm. Sounds like, uh... Sounds like Atom. Every time we hear about soldiers, it's always Atom. Well, I assume it's Atom. It was definitely in Otranoi. A thin, old-looking woman. She looks old. N not necessarily. That's good. It's good. This is uh, at least I don't know her age for sure. We haven't seen her uh, the age of people recently. Good, good, good. I don't know. The, the game has been patched since the since the last big patch. But anyway, a thin, old-looking woman in a head scarf urges you to come closer by wagging her finger. She's she's wagging her finger so that uh, so that I come closer. Her prices are terrible, so that's that. Don't walk away! Look at my wares! The best products in the wastes! Discount? What discounts? Okay, can I ask you something? I guess! Uh, what do you think about Paragon? Why? What? I asked what, and she asks, why think about it? It's a good thing we have this fence, so there are no bandits at least, but still Krasnos Nameni is better for living an honest life. People are very obsessed with Krasnos Nameni. <laughs> Everybody, and and there was the, that other guy that said, oh, Krasnos Nameni. Dash, proper use of the dash, uh, dash, who can never stop thinking about Paragon, dash again, proper use of the dash, but that's just false, Karasana's Nameni doesn't care about Paragon, maybe the, the leaders do, but not really, the only mission I could do for the leaders was to just annihilate the circus because they don't like the shows they pass or something, just a oh, gross circus, what is this, clowns, I don't like clowns. Um, so let's see. You're gonna leave me for no oh, right. Uh, but still, Krasnos Nameni is better for living an honest life, she says. Uh, how's work? Relatives and children roam the countryside, buying surplus vegetables and stuff. Relatives? Her relatives. How big is your family? How big is your family so that you would say, ah, relatives. Not even my relatives. It's just relatives. As in, like, people. You don't say my people a lot, you say people, because you refer to people. It could be your people, but still, you know what I mean? It, she has such a huge family that she just says relatives. And children. And she None of the huge family is children. Buying surplus vegetables and stuff, she says, I do, the, I do the selling. I have the best prices. No, I don't. The only one who had better ones got his whole stand incinerated in a freak accident I had nothing to do with. Now, that's funny. Are you still trading? That What kind of quest is that? That was a quest that I asked. Only here in Paragon, if you own a place, you hold on to it. D sure. Rumors? I heard that there's this a atom organization that silently makes our lives better somehow. I don't trust such rumors. Well, I just can just be uh, offensive to her and just be, like, really mean for some reason, saying goodbye from there. But I'm pretty sure it wouldn't matter for anything because that's just the standard line. Although, I say I'm pretty sure, but... I it would surprise me if the dialogue were programmed to have a special reaction from her if I said that particular line. But it could happen. We never know. So here we are in the boat. It's a big boat over here. And let's have a chat with this fellow over here. A tall, pouty man 
looks into a grimy cup. His shifty eyes run about every object in the near vicinity. Once in a while, he drinks without stopping his observations. He's saying things. He's drinking, but he's always saying things. Ah, oh, look at that table over there. It is round. Look at that guy over there. He's wearing a white t-shirt or shirt, and he's wearing sitting and he's drinking all the while. What observations is that supposed to be? Uh, he has some money. Prices? Pri Give me good prices. Come on. Prices are good. I'll sell him my pre-war gorilla, and I'll sell him my canned meat. Uh, well, it's not that I can sell much. A joint. I can sell you a beer as well. Mm-hmm. How about a toadstool? You can get a toadstool, can't you? Yes, you can. Can you get another toadstool? Yes, you can. Good. Ooh, is that 10 millimeter? That is 10 millimeter. Give me all of those. Uh, a armor piercing in particular, very important. Um, I can give you more toadstool. No, I don't need to give you more. Oh, I do need to give you more toadstools because of that freaking. A wolf antidote. That's very light. I like that. It's very good. We got some soap. No, we don't use soap all that often. That's a 27. That's uh, that's relatively good. And I also have this, which is actually important for... Um, uh, it's uh, it's actually important for healing kits. I got a hiccup. That's what you heard. My voice being all weird. So he is shouting observations. Pardon me. Are you waiting for someone? I'm going to ask. The tall... Uh, not the man. Not the tall. The man lifts up his left brow and... Shakes his head. Waiting, huh? Well, maybe. But mostly, I'm just killing time. Hmm. Many around here are simply killing time. Tell me more, friend. Right. Well, I'm in a predicament. Let's say I made a very spontaneous deal, and I mingled with the wrong crowd. Now I'm paying for it. The man shuts up, as if remembering not to say too much, and looks at you suspiciously. That's about it. Now go, and stop distracting me from thinking. You understand that talking about this topic more is not in the men's future plans. Listen, your face looks familiar. Have we met before? What's your name? The man looks at you with doubt and finally shakes his head. My name is Ott Ostap. But honestly, I don't remember meeting you anywhere outside of Paragon. Okay, well, maybe I'm mistaken. Um, can I ask you some questions? Tell you the truth, I'm not in the mood for questions. Well, that's... I guess that's that. So he... He's waiting for someone, even though he didn't say that. My character said, but my character is super insightful, so he would know. Um, and I will take that. Uh, and uh, also, he has made some hasty decisions in his life. Oh, look at that. We got some some of that. It's pretty good. He's made some hasty decisions which, has, which uh, have landed him in a little bit of hot water, I would say. Let's have a chat with the bartender over here. A bored-looking mustached man looks around the rusty barge. He doesn't look very impressed, or not impressed, that would be weird if he didn't look impressed with his own establishment, but he doesn't look very interested as he glances at you. Your throat went dry. I can splash you some good stuff. Hmm, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. His prices are not too great, but they're not too terrible either. I don't eat anything from there. Um... Call Orem for me, comrade. Let's do that. Orem is away, but I'll tell him you asked for him. When you get when you get back. Oh, okay. It's a bit sad. Can, can I ask, uh, what's new around here? Power struggle. Guards versus the traitors. Officials versus the documents. Bees versus honey. You know how it goes. Talk to Fyodor Maximov. Vi Maximovich, if you like to know more. I like to know more. That's the thing I enjoy, knowing more. Bees versus honey, though. Guards produced tra produce traitors? Documents are... It sounds... What is he trying to do? Because off, uh, officials versus documents. Huh. Maybe the connection here is more they work with each other. Or one works for the... I don't know. Um... Can I ask you some questions? Why not? Ask away. Nothing to do here anyway. It's not like I'm the bartender. I think he's being sarcastic. And that would be good sarcasm. If it were, I think it might be. Why do you, why do you look so grim? Slow day? Yep. Yep. We lost a lot of people recently. But what can we do? The bandits are crazy around here. The traders are looking for ways around this place. Me and my wife hang on by selling stuff to those who come look at the dog fights here in the hull. Muffled dog, dog barking is heard from down below. They noticed that he said something about dogs, and he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. Um, well, sounds pretty sad. Can I not do anything about the dog fighting? 
I don't know, like throw him at the dogs or something and just free the dogs, let them go. They're probably gonna kill me if I if I'm not careful. The dogs, I mean. Um So what can you tell me about Paragon? It's a former pirate keep. But nowadays it's like a true settlement, more or less. Well, less, actually. But still I I want wine more than I did already. Life is kind of fun back here, if you know how to live. Th that didn't sound... You did, uh, okay, he's throwing me mixed signals here. Uh, wh so what manner of gossip have you heard? Some so-called scientist once told me that the Hesperos star... At least he's not telling, talking, me, uh, talking to me about Mermix, so I, I like the Hesperos star. Is an asteroid that's coming straight to Earth. Yeah, right. Everyone around here knows that Hesperus Star is actually a planet. A planet out of the Taurus system. I... I don't... I'm, I don't know what... Is that a reference to Star Wars? Or Star Trek? Or Battlestar Galactica for all I know? I have no idea. Uh, what should I fear in Paragon? Crooks. Con artists. There's a lot of folks here who tend to hide their true intentions. But when was the world free of such people? Never, I tells ya. Hmm. Oh, did I just... A rhetorical question. It is. It is a rhetorical question. He does answer it. So it sort of doesn't... It's not doesn't have the same weight as just asking that. As a rhetorical way. It is a rhetorical... Look at that. I was... That's good. It's... 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 It's sometimes... It's, some people don't know what a rhetorical questions are. And sometimes you see like, oh, that's a rhetorical question. Well, no, sometimes it's not. And people say that. It's like irony. People say that it's ironic and it's not. It's a very common misunderstanding. Um, and, yeah, it's good. See you, later. See you later, comrade. You you, you who know what a rhetorical question is. That's, I'm, I'll just look around and steal your your linens and, and things. There's a lot of frogs around here. You can hear the, the croaking. I guess, uh, say, frogs could be toads. And actually, probably frogs. The toads have a very distinct call, even though I can't really tell. It might be either, because they're basically all the same creature. <laughs> it's in my book, it's all the same. Can I go in? Look at that, I can go in and not get arrested, no, not necessarily arrested, not get stuck. A middle-aged man in clean clothes is reading a hardcover book. Seeing you, he stops reading and pushes his glasses up the bridge of his nose. Fyodor Maximovich, how can I be of assistance? Uh, funny, I was just about to ask how I could assist you. Uh, what a turn of events. And where you're supposed to be? I am a, a traveler and seek a, of high adventure. Not the first time I, I seek that, which is a weird expression. So, you'd be glad to join a cause, big or small, right? Maybe you could help us out here. Uh, yeah, well, I'm ready for the details. Uh, Fyodor thinks for a bit. A long, deep wrinkle on his forehead becomes more and more pronounced. Finally, he claps his hands. I've got it. Paragon isn't doing as well as it could be. The reason? Constant bickering between the merchants and the guards. I swear those idiots fight simply for the joy of fighting. Although it hasn't yet blossomed into an open conflict, I, I can expect all the wonders of open civil war any day now. Shooting in the streets, mass looting, all that stuff. It, it's very scary possibility. We need to reach common ground. The traders and the guards need an, a, a, a neutral third party to negotiate their conflicts. This way sounds like I'm full of myself, or this may sound like I'm full of myself, but I, it's actually true, I am the best man for the job. Without me, things around here would quickly run to bloodshed. There's a problem though. The leaders of both parties hate and fear everyone so much they spend all their time locked in their quarters. It'll be hard getting to them, and nobody in Paragon wants to risk it. But you... An avid... No, you said a high adventurer could at least give it a try. You look like you have what it takes to inspire them both. Um... What's that line? I'm not sure they'll enjoy such a surprise. I'm not really sure what surprise it is, but yeah. As proletarians, we have nothing to lose but our chains. I think that might be a reference to a saying in specific, because I think I might have heard it. Um, I agree. Where, where, where do I look for them? Good show. They're both right here in Paragon. The head guard, Nikolai Siplovsky. Don't call him the other thing, because, I don't know, people... 
Anyway, sits in, in my former office. There shouldn't be. I know there should be. Actually, that coma is in the right place. Sits in my former office in the Inland Navigation Building. The head merchant, Leonia Abramov. Also, he has a weird nickname, I think. But that doesn't mind. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's in the hull of this very ship. They will resist at first, but do your best to persuade them. I get the idea. I'll go do something about it. I also need to ask him more questions, but we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Carol RPG, and this has been Atom RPG. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope I didn't annoy you too much with that voice. Um, and uh, if you did enjoy it, and or if you just want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, don't forget to leave a like down below, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>